the Un Queen Mary University of London. And Matthias is going to give the presentation. Right. Uh, thank you, Paul, for the introduction. The GJK algorithm is an iterative method to compute the minimum distance between two convex objects. It has been developed about 30 years ago, but nevertheless is still considered one of the fastest and more reliable um, algorithms for this purpose. But there are some scenarios in which it doesn't perform that well. And this is what I'm trying to address today. I'll present a method to fix the GJK algorithm in these complex scenarios. My name is Mattia Montanari. I'm a mechanical engineer, and that's why you see a turbine engine in my first slide. Um, turbine engine can be fairly complex. Usually from the outside, when you go on a plane, you'd only see the fan, which is the front on the left-hand side. But why is this interesting to see graph? Because we want to, scale, to simulate the whole engine at full speed. Now, if you could watch inside the engine, you would see 40,000 parts that they all move. From the collision detection and contact detection point of view, this is clearly a big uh, computational bottleneck. So that's why I first looked into GJK. I had to make it work for high fidelity model, and um, I just wanted to share with this vibrant community the results. It's a damage which is not acceptable, that is very dangerous. So manufacturers do this sort of test. They blow up, they design, they, they manufacture, and they blow up the whole engine for our safety. What is really remarkable uh, in this test is the cost. As I said, you have to design and manufacture the whole engine. So none of these tests is carried out without computer simulations. Just like in computer graphics, simulations for engineers are a big deal, as you probably um, are aware of. But I don't want to give the wrong expectations. I'm not here to tell you how to build an engine. Um, I work in an impact engineering laboratory. I'm a PhD, PhD student. What we do, obviously, is to work in more, or smaller fundamental tests, like this one. This is a tensile test at really, really high speed on a titanium um, bar. This is a ceramic sphere. And this is fiberglass. These are really, really small specimens, but when we want to break things at uh, 600 meters per second, much larger components, then we use this gas gun. On the right-hand side, you see that there is um, a projectile coming, and the projectile is essentially a flat plate which impacts another plate made out of carbon fiber. When we want to simulate all of this, because as I said, all these tests are expensive, we do simulation for all these tests, and that's my job, uh, to make the simulations as fast as, as fast as possible, but also as accurate as possible. So that's why I looked into GJK, because on the, mm, you know, the nature of impacts, there is something coming into contact, and eventually things will break. So the GJK algorithm, um, how many of you implemented or tried to implement the GJK algorithm? Just raise hands. Okay, few. So just to make sure we're on the same page, the GJK in a nutshell is very simple, two operations. You first test if a given vector is the minimum separating vector between the two objects. If this is not the minimum distance between the two objects, the minimum separating vector, then you compute another one um, with the distance sub-algorithm. Just to give an example, consider two, ex um, two objects and an initial guess for the separation vector, the GJK algorithm gently converges toward the minimum distance. But as I said, not always. There are a few cases in which GJK is not very robust, and it will start doing some funny things and not converge. There are solutions to um, limit this effect in the literature, but they're not very, very fish effective, rather. And they've only, um, they mostly looked at the test, at the, um, the first operation, the minimum distance test operation. So instead, it works out that the real problem is actually the distance sub-algorithm, which is affected by cancellation error. And this is what I'll focus next. And this is where the contribution uh, of our work uh, is addressed. So what is this doing? The distance sub-algorithm has to compute the point of a simplex which is closest to the origin. You know, these are the three simplices you can have in three dimensions. And now you want to find the closest point and express this at a convex combination. So for example, you have a triangle, you have the origin, 
you can express, you can uh, find the point to minimum um, norm, so the point on the triangle which is closest to the origin, which is, um, can be identified by the red vector. But that's not enough. The problem you really want to solve is to compute the point nu, then express it as a convex combination of the minimum number of simplices vertices. In this particular example, you want to express nu as a function of x1, x2, but not of x3. This is because of the GJK algorithm. So we don't know, in this example, the barycentric coordinates and basically the subset of the simplex that supports the um, point of minimum norm. What is the original GJK doing? There is a really, really efficient algorithm called the Johnson algorithm, and the idea is the following. We know the minimum distance is the norm of the separating vector. Sorry, the distance is the norm. The minimum distance happens when the derivative is zero, which geometrically simply means a scalar product equal to zero. Now, what is A and what is B in this particular case? The separating vector could be A, and B is a face of the simplex. For example, G, um, x1 minus x2. These two vectors have to be normal in order to have minimum distance. Now, you can put this orthogonality condition on the far right of the slide into an algebraic system. This system is very small, uh, at the most four by four. It can be solved efficiently with Gaussian, um, um, with, uh, with Gaussian method. But you can well imagine uh, that there are some robustness issues here. If the simplex, simplex has points which are affinally dependent, then you run into cancellation. The difference is almost zero, and the cancellation error amplifies into the error, which means simply that the system is ill-conditioned and the determinant of the matrix is zero. Now let's see it with an example, what does that mean? Let's see what, what, what can be the problem. Consider two gear teeth, and one is steady, the other one moves toward the other. I measure the, G, the distance between them uh, each time step with the GJK algorithm, and this is the result. On the blue, you see the distance. It decreases, but there are three um, lower values of the distance which are not physical. To these lower values, at the bottom of the chart, you see um, few rectangles. These rectangles correspond to the determinant of the coefficient matrix A. And these values are in the order of the rounding error. This causes instability. So we found a problem. Let's try to work out a solution. The simplest solution I could think of is a similar or a very similar linear system but I wanted to have the matrix M to be as simple as possible. That was the best idea I had in my PhD. To remove the orthogonal condition which is embedded into the matrix A, to move it from the left-hand side of this equation to the right-hand side. And then everything came naturally because M could be a very, very, very simple matrix where you have in the first row ones and all the rest is just the coordinates of your simplex. Now, if you also remember that the barycentric coordinates are invariant to um, projection, you basically can put this orthogonal condition on the right-hand side. What it means is um, the, point, the point P has got barycentric coordinates with respect to the purple triangle, which are equivalent to the barycentric coordinates with respect to the blue highlighted triangle then we can assemble a linear system which is, again, very simple. The first row um, guarantees that the barycentric coordinates form a partition of unity, and P are simply the coordinates of the point um, you see at the bottom right. Um, and here's the result. The distance now is a blue curve a lot smoother. The determinant of this matrix always is always well above the um, rounding error, the machine accuracy. But furthermore, the distance now has got a lower value. It's not just the red, the, the minimum value is not the square root of the rounding error, it's in the order of the rounding error. 
We call the new method design volume methods. There are some more, well, new more details in the paper. Um, you can refer to the paper. I do encourage you to ask questions if you have. But now I'll present few results which are not in the paper. Um, uh, sorry, I should mention um, we wanted to be, uh, we wanted to have an algorithm more accurate, true, and uh, more robust, done. But we didn't anticipate something. We did anticipate that uh, the GJK algorithm with the sign volume method, it would also be faster. Why it's faster? Both algorithms are recursive algorithms, which means they look into a simplex, they look into all Voronoi regions around the simplex, and they look for the origin. For example, Johnson's algorithm looks, first of all, at the uh, Voronoi regions that correspond to a vertex, for example, of this triangle, and then goes up to the Voronoi regions that correspond to the edges, and then up into the triangle. Design volume methods, instead, it works the other way around. Starts from the top, and then looks at the edges. Now, with this method, you can also very, very easily select which regions to exclude. The GJK algorithm, um, you know, with the GJK algorithm, you know a priori that certain regions cannot contain the origin, so you can exclude them. Actually, you could do the same with Johnson algorithm, but that would require data caching, so a little bit more coding effect, uh, effort. But that's not the point. The point of this slide is the Johnson algorithm is always bottom up, the sign volume is top down, and that's the key difference that impacts the computing time. Now I'll compare the, the CPU time of three different algorithms, Johnson's volume, sign volumes algorithm and the Voronoi search. By Voronoi search, I mean the simplest algorithm you could think of um, to solve this issue, uh, to, to solve this problem. And it's actually the, um, one of the algorithms you always find in many, many valuable textbooks. But unfortunately, um, it shouldn't really be there. It's an extremely inefficient algorithm. It's very slow. We're going to see it now. I consider um, a um, segment, and I placed the origin into the, gray, in the, the green region. And that's the computing time for the three algorithms. Voronoi is always slower. If you now move the simplex so that the origin is in um, another, is in the other bar in Voronoi region, the trend is similar. Voronoi region is always slower. Johnson and sign volume algorithm compare um, fairly um, well. I mean, they, they got similar computing time. Things change if you use different simplices. I'll skip the two simplex. The three simplex look like this. So if we look at the left-hand side of these charts, first of all, you'll see that the sign volume method is remarkably slower than, anybody else, than any other algorithm. But the ones on the right, the examples on the right, are more interesting. That is when the origin is found into the Voronoi region of an edge, triangle, and the volume. For the last two um, uh, examples, you see that the Voronoi region is significantly slower, even twice as slow as the Johnson algorithm. And the Johnson algorithm kind of has got this trend. It gently increases, whereas the sign volume, it decreases basically exponentially. Now, what we wanted to do now is to put these algorithms into the GJK and see what happens in terms of computing time. We place, I used to, um, I, I run an experiment with two distant spheres, and here's the computing time. On top of Johnson and uh, sign volumes, I also compare the backup procedure. If you did work on GJK, you would know that backup procedures is yet another sign, uh, um, sub-algorithm which is very robust, but very, very slow. And in fact, backup procedure, backup procedure is lower. Sign volume performs um, slightly faster than Johnson. If you now move to move the two objects um, very close to each other, there isn't much difference, there isn't much point in using a new algorithm. But when the two objects overlap because of the different logic I've shown before, bottom up, top down, with the sign volume algorithms, you can save about 25% 
per GJK call. Let's see um, a more sophisticated example, which is probably the most accurate simulation of the bunny, Stanford bunny, you've ever seen. This is an accurate finite element model for a rubber bunny, few knots falling on top of it. We ran this experiment twice, one with the Johnson algorithm, and we re registered about four, more than 40 million calls to this Johnson algorithm. About 10% of these calls also in, needed to, in, um, were, were uh, not robust, so GJK needed to invoke the backup procedure, and just for the GJK, we had to spend about 73 minutes of CPU time. Now, we run exactly the same experiment, only with the same uh, sign volume algorithm, by replacing just one function in the whole code. And here's the result. A significant reduction in numbers of calls to this function, and about 20% of CPU time re reduction. So why do we, with this method, get a lower number of calls to, this, um, to GJK? Because this improves the accuracy of GJK. GJK is iterative, is a search. If you direct the, the GJK algorithm toward a more accurate, more optimal search, that's the result. And now that we made this improvement to the GJK algorithm, we can use it for mechanical applications where you got uh, sand grains, not two, but millions of sand grains following top of each other. You can do something similar I've seen here um, at Seagraph, where you do topology optimization. You've got the complex topology, in this case, discretized by Voronoi regions, and you optimize uh, iteratively using GJK. Or you can also apply um, hierarchical collision detection. So to conclude, what I presented today is an improvement for the GJK algorithm so that you can get more accurate distance query. Most of the time, you can get up to 20% of speed up. The geometrical interpretation is simple, therefore the implementation is simple, and the implementation is not invasive. If you already have a GJK implemented somewhere, you just have to comment out one function, replace it with a new function, and you might see some speed up. Uh, before I conclude, I really want to say thanks to the industrial partner who supported this research, um, the editor of Transactional Graphics and the anonymous reviewers. And for more details, you can ask questions now or refer to the paper. Thank you very much.